hi hello friends welcome back to our channel in this video i'm going to discuss about the minerals so so in this video i'm going to discuss one of the most important uh, mineral that is calcium so so let's move on to the video so it is one of the most important and abundant mineral that which we can find in our body is calcium so uh, the total content of the calcium in an adult man it is about 1 to 1.5 kgs so if a person is uh, uh, weighing about uh, 50 kgs in that is uh, having the 1 to 1.5 kgs uh, weight of uh, where 1 to 1.5 uh, kgs in his weight were coming from the calcium so in that 1 to 1.5 kgs of the calcium so 99 percentage of this calcium is present in the bone and the teeth whereas one percentage is present in uh, skeletal tissues next what are the functions of these uh, calcium as we know it is uh, present in the bones and the tissues uh, sorry te teeth so it will one of the uh, first most important uh, function of the calcium is uh, it is uh, useful for the development of the bones and the teeth okay development of bones and the teeth so calcium along with the phosphate is required for the formation calcium along with phosphate is required for the formation and uh, physical strength of the skeletal tissue so for the uh, it is uh, important for the formation of the bones and the teeth and also strengthening of the uh, skeletal tissues uh, our skeletal tissue so bone is mineralized connective tissue so it is one of the most important mcq you can be asked so uh, bone is a connective tissue which is mineralized with the calcium and phosphorus so bone is one of the most important mineralized connective tissue okay so it consists of osteoblast and osteoclast so what is this osteoblast so osteoblast or the uh, cells that which are helpful for the bone formation where which results in the bone formation whereas osteoclasts so result in the demineralization demineralization means uh, where opposite to the osteoblast for, uh, functions so osteoblast will help for the formation of the bone whereas osteoclast will uh, will remove where uh, destroy the bone means demineralization uh, demineralization of the bone okay so it is one of the most important uh, mineral that which will helpful for the development of the bones and the teeth by the help of the osteoclasts and the osteoblasts so osteoblasts will help for the formation of the uh, bone whereas osteoclasts will uh, result in the demineralization so these will uh, work in vice versa opposite in each other okay next move on to the second function it is muscle contraction so calcium interaction with the troponin c triggers a uh, muscle contraction whenever we uh, see the structure of the muscle we find the troponin so uh, in the muscle contraction so when uh, these uh, calcium triggers the uh, troponin c this leads to the muscle contraction so and it also activates ATPase, increases the interaction of actin and myosin. So, uh, actin, so here actin, it is not action. So, actin and myosin. So, these are the muscle proteins. So, these muscle proteins consist of the troponin and uh, uh, troponin C. So, uh, and it has the ATPase. So, ATPase is the uh, uh, enzyme that it also activates the ATPase, increases the interaction of actin and myosin. Okay. So, uh, whenever the actin and myosin get interacted the muscle movement will be happen okay so in such a way the muscle movement will be uh, occurring due to the your the triggering point of this muscle contraction or a uh, mineral that which is helpful for the muscle contraction is a uh, calcium so calcium plays vital role in the uh, muscle contraction by triggering the troponin c and also activation of atpase by uh, which uh, leads to the interaction of actin and myosin so these are uh, actin and myosin are the muscle proteins okay Next, move on to the muscle, uh, move on to the third function of the uh, calcium. It is uh, blood coagulation. So, blood coagulation is a process whenever an uh, injury or any wound is occurred. So, the cascade reactions will be taking place in the blood, uh, blood coagulation, uh, blood clotting. So, in that cascade reactions, so uh, in the uh, calcium is one of the most uh, important factor in that. So, calcium will helpful for the blood coagulation. So, it is a factor four. So, several reactions in the cascade of the blood coagulation process are dependent on the calcium. Okay next move on to the nerve transmissions so whenever uh, it is also helpful in the nerve transmissions so one uh, the information the transmission is like uh, any information from one nerve to the another nerve can be transported means transmitted by the calcium so so calcium is uh, necessary for the transmission of the nerve impulse okay next move on to the uh, other function is membrane integrity and permeability calcium influences the membrane structure and transport of water and several ions across the membrane so calcium only triggers uh, mem uh, permeability whenever we are talking about the permeability so it will be uh, uh, depends on the concentration like high, uh, high concentration to the low concentration right so in such a way the calcium is the main important uh, 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 ion that uh, which will be uh, influences the transport of water and several minerals and ions across the 
uh, membrane so activation of enzymes so it will activate the enzymes calcium is needed for the di uh, activation of enzymes so such as uh, some of the examples are lipase act uh, atps and succinate dehydrogenase so we have discussed before there's uh, atps so atps is an enzyme right so atps is an enzyme which is uh, we have discussed before it, it will be helpful for the muscle contraction right so which is a uh, uh, which makes a uh, uh, con uh, attachment means uh, bonding of this actin and myosin muscle proteins so uh, in such a way your calcium is necessary for the activation of many of the enzymes in that uh, some of them are lipase adps uh, uh, and succinate dehydrogenase where calmodulin is a complex uh, uh, which is uh, bonded with the calcium so it makes a complex well uh, these complex will activate some enzymes so the, what are that enzymes so they are adenylate cyclase and calcium dependent protein kinase so these are some of the uh, enzymes that which uh, triggered or uh, get activated by the calcium calmodulin complex okay next move on to the cal uh, other function it is uh, act as uh, intracellular messengers so certain hormones exist their auction action mediated by the calcium so some of them are uh, deactivated uh, in the deactivated position get activated by the calcium so some examples for these are calcium act as a secondary messenger so uh, we have uh, we, we discussed that it act as an intracellular messenger so it act as a secondary mes uh, messenger for the epinephrine in liver so glycogenolysis and acts as a third messenger for anti dietetic hormone which is ADH acts through the camp so, so cyclic adenosine uh, monophosphate and then calcium so it acts as a third messenger for the anti dietetic hormone acts through camp so cyclic adeno adenosine uh, monophosphate and then calcium so, so it will activate many of the hormones which are in the activity form okay release of hormones so it will also helpful for the release of hormone not only their activation it also involves in the release so insulin parathyroid hormone calcitonin or the some hormones released from the endocrine glands is facilitated by the calcium so these are insulin parathyroid hormone these endocrine glands so insulins are released from pancreas by the endocrine glands so it, it is facilitated by the calcium okay and next to move on to the secretory process so it's the process where uh, the exo endocytosis and exocytosis cell motility so all these are uh, uh, where these motility or exocytosis or endocytosis where occur these occurring uh, due to the movement of the microfilament and microtubules that which are present in our cilia uh, our pla uh, our uh, motility organs right so uh, all these were regulated by this calcium okay next move on to the contact inhibition cell communication occurred by the calcium so contact inhibition means whenever uh, when a cell is present so uh, one cell to the other cell is uh, uh, get contact by the calcium so cell to cell contact and addition uh, adhesion of tissue cells require the calcium okay action on heart so calcium act as a myocardium and prolonged cysto so calcium uh, will act on the myo myocardium and uh, it uh, cysto it will uh, prolong the systolic phase so all these were the functions of these uh, calcium it is uh, helpful for the development of the bones and tissue and muscle contraction blood, blood coagulation nerve transmission membrane integrity and permeability and uh, Activation of enzymes, calmodulin mediation, action of calcium, calcium as an intracellular messenger, and uh, act release of hormones and activation of hormones, secretory process, uh, and uh, contact inhibition, and uh, contact action on heart. So all these were the functions of the uh, calcium. I think these will be helpful for the for you. So if you like the video, please subscribe and share the video. Thank you.